Hi everyone, it's me, and today let's learn to cook a yummy turkey together. Let's go. Don't scare me. Let's go. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Food Theory. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Food Theory. Hello. Show that's given thanks while wearing Spanx. That's Thank right, you. theorists. Here in the U.S., it's time for Thanksgiving, where tradition dictates that we take time to pause and reflect on all the good things that have happened in our lives and also stuff ourselves with an irresponsible amount of food. We're talking pumpkin pie, sweet potato pie, yam, stuffing, gravy, cranberry sauce, some casserole or another, and of course, turkey. Go ahead, name a more iconic duo than Thanksgiving and turkey. I'll wait. See, a roasted turkey is the undisputed centerpiece of the Thanksgiving feast. Not only is it huge and stunning to look at, if it comes out right, that is, but it's also a huge undertaking. The first time I hosted Thanksgiving, the turkey was this harsh intro into adulting. Everything about cooking the turkey is hard. For one thing, it's just a huge time investment. First, you have to purchase the bird at a time of year when everyone else is looking to purchase the exact same item. Then, the mere act of thawing the bird takes literal days. Then, you've got the brining and the cleaning and the seasoning to worry about before you even start cooking it. And that is also going to take a huge amount of time. The general rule of thumb for a turkey is 15 to 20 minutes of cooking per pound of bird. That means a 15 pound turkey translates to about 5 hours of roasting. And then, once it's in the oven, that's when things actually get hard, because roasting a whole turkey is a high-stakes proposition. It would be one thing if you were just cooking for yourself, but at Thanksgiving, there's an entire group of people eagerly awaiting the turkey the moment it comes out of the oven. Screwing up your Thanksgiving turkey is not an option, and yet, it's highly likely that you will screw it up, because we're talking about a huge, fickle piece of meat that's actually two different types of meat sandwiched together. White meat and dark meat, which, it's worth noting, cook very differently from each other. Which leads me to the question, does it really have to be this hard? Th yeah, true. Does it really have to be that hard? Why not a chicken instead of a turkey? Thanksgiving is supposedly about family coming together, and yet Thanksgiving requires at least one member of the family to devote pretty much the entire day focused on the turkey. I get that it's a tradition, but wouldn't it be great if there was a way to emphasize the non-stressful traditions of Thanksgiving instead? Like watching the Thanksgiving Day Parade, or even better, the dog show that comes immediately afterward? Yeah. I mean, there has got to be a better way. We are in the year of our Lord 2020. Why have there been no advancements in turkey technology? But you must remember that this video came out in the year 2020, right now it's in the year 2022, things may have changed. And yeah, there are certainly other ways besides roasting a full turkey. That's your turkey? <laughs> Every year, plenty of people across this great land cook their turkey in a variety of ways, from smoking, to sous vide, to deep frying, to stuffing it with a duck that's stuffed with a chicken to create the abomination we call the turducken. But most of these methods involve even more work. If I may speak for my fellow Americans, and also for Canadians who celebrate Thanksgiving in October, what what? We all want the classic Thanksgiving turkey experience, but we sure wouldn't mind if the process was just a wee bit easier. Well, true. What you can try um, deep frying it. It's deep fry is kind of hard to wait. You can. Well, theorists, what I'm about to tell you Sorry. might very well change your Thanksgivings forever. Apparently, a turkey shortcut does exist, and it is <gasps> significant. All you have to do is take the dang turkey and spatchcock it. I can, I can say that word, right, YouTube? Please don't demonetize me. It is a cooking Ooh. term, and if nothing else, it's the holidays, after all. So strap in, you turkeys. Today's food theory is myth-busting the supposed Thanksgiving hack. And I do mean hack. Spatchcocking. Also known as butterflying, if you're boring and hate funny words, Butterfly. It's a fancy word for a simple process. You cut out the bird's spine, or you ask your butcher to do it for you, then press it down until it's flattened out before you shove it in the oven. Everything else can still be the same. If you're used to brining it, you can still brine it, along with any other seasoning method that you've been using over the years. But by doing this one small thing, not by changing our cooking method, but by changing its shape before we put it in the oven, we can actually cook the turkey at a higher temperature, which cuts way down on the amount of cooking time needed. Reportedly, by about 70 5%. Let me say that again. One additional prep step can turn a four-hour turkey into a one-hour turkey. Now, the concept of spatchcocking has been around since at least the 1800s, but as Google Trends clearly shows, the term has really only caught on in recent years. And 
you don't you don't need spike 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 it's just one particular month searches spike early november mark bitman of the new york times who published his spatchcocked turkey method back in 2002 deserves the credit for popularizing this specific method you have to take out the backbone the idea here is to get the surface area of the bird bigger than it was before then you want to flatten this thing there we go you have been slaving over unevenly cooked turkeys that took four hours to do. This is 35 minutes, and it's good. So let me just tap on the brakes here for a sec. From hours become minutes of cooking. That's, it can, it's time consuming to, you know. Again, am I supposed to believe that this is actually the first major advancement in turkey roasting since the 1800s? If spatchcocking is such a long-standing method of preparing fowl, am I supposed to believe that society just overlooked the fact that this outrageously efficient method could be applied to turkeys when all along they were using it on ducks and geese and other sorts of birds until... Wait, is that the okay Sesame Street birds? That's awkward. Let's see one more time how to cook it uh, properly first. Good. So let me just tap on the brakes okay. here for a second. Am I supposed to believe that this is actually the first major advancement in turkey roasting since the 1800s? If spa oh. <laughs> Riding a carriage written by birds. Spatchcocking is such a long-standing method of preparing fowl. Am I supposed to believe that society just overlooked the fact that this outrageously efficient method could be applied to turkeys when all along they were using it on ducks and geese and other sorts of birds and big birds from Sesame Street? Wait a minute, I just noticed. Um, my audience watching this video, do you actually know how to properly cook a chicken? Hmm. Like, I know you need to smash it with a bum. It's not smash it, just compress it? Till like, very recently? Like, humanity, <clears throat> what are you doing with yourself? One possible explanation for why society might have been slow to catch on to the ways of the spatchcock is that we want our Norman Rockwell moment when the Thanksgiving turkey gets presented at the table. Rockwell was an artist famous for painting Americana, and his 1942 painting entitled Freedom From Want famously depicts a huge, fully intact bird and encapsulates abundance and Americana and Thanksgiving perfectly. There's definitely a presentational aspect to Thanksgiving dinner. After all, there's a group gathered and the meal takes a tremendous amount of effort, so why shouldn't it be a big show? Of course, there's other potential explanations for why we might not spatchcock our turkeys, and these are a bit more concrete. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it's not actually more efficient at all because it produces a lesser bird. Drier meat, less crispy skin. I mean, let's be honest, that it can reduce cooking time by 75% is a massive claim. It seems True, and why must it particularly be turkey and not chicken for households that couldn't afford turkeys? Why must it be particularly be turkey? For different income households, households, maybe turkey is more expensive. Chicken might be cheaper. It's too good to be true. Like, there's gotta be a catch, right? Sure, the cooking time is shorter, but maybe the taste suffers. Maybe the texture suffers. However, spatchcock enthusiasts online seem to be suggesting the exact opposite. Many people swear that spatchcocking actually gives you a more even bake, and in fact, improves the bird in addition to saving copious amounts of time. Ho oh, ho, when I hear a claim this bold about something so simple, you know that I gotta put it to the test. The science scientific test. That's why I enlisted the help of Stephanie, the undisputed turkey master in our household to help me pull off a head-to-head -head matchup, or I suppose I should say a headless to headless matchup between a spatchcocked turkey and the classic roasted turkey that our family's been enjoying for literal years. And it must be very awkward thinking that you have to eat two turkeys this month. Yep, two. Two turkeys. Yep. It's going to stuff you full. Nearly a decade. It also helps that Stephanie knows CPR. I figure it can only help us when we get to the part where we have to crack the ribs against the counter. First, we bought two identically sized 13-pound turkeys. Then, we prepared them the exact same way, including a 48-hour brine and butter under the skin. I can't believe it. The cat. The cat. Yeah. The only reason you started this channel was so we could have more turkey on Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is my master plan the entire time. <laughs> my fan is like, mmm, that's the master plan. Then it was time for our two turkeys to take two very different paths. One was selected for spatchcocking and was named mm -hmm. Spatchcock the Turkey. And I special the, the other was named Sherman because the Hi, that was the only other good name that we could come up with at the time. So we're in the pro final prep stages for both of these birds. Uh, we have the regular one, we have the spatchcock one. These two methods are essentially trying to accomplish the same thing, which is an even cook, but this one involves a lot of temperature up and down, a lot of fancy stuff. 
and I, this could change Thanksgiving forever. Yeah, the spatchcock layers everything out so the meat is all on the same playing field, so presumably it cooks one, faster, and two, more evenly. You must remember, this is two turkeys during the global pandemic period. How are you gonna finish so much meat? You can fish it. You can feed a small village for a meal. Uh, how are you gonna finish? So you're not getting the breast done while the dark meat is and things like that. Exactly. So like, I think we, I think we actually have to do this now. I think we have to like, like butcher this bird. Are you, are you saying that that bird is spineless? <gasps> it will be. It's about to be. <laughs> I should also it's mention, both turkeys are getting Whoa. cooked with the neck. That that. I don't know if spatchcocking is getting us censored, but you holding up that, <laughs> that definitely is definitely is. getting us demonetized. This is the turkey neck. Stop doing that! <laughs> so secretly, this is my favorite part of the entire Thanksgiving bird. Man, I, this I is know. the video that launched a thousand I know. <laughs> All right, okay. Mm. Mm. Yep, that thing does look similar to... Let's keep this wholesome and family friendly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pat. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Stephanie. <laughs> Man. My like inner country bumpkin doesn't come out very often, apparently only at Thanksgiving. So we went about cutting out the spine with kitchen shears. Okay, Stephanie went about cutting out the spine with kitchen shears. I cheered her on from the sidelines. I power. <laughs> I know Mark Bittman opted for the boning knife, but shears are another option that many spatchcockers suggest. This is actually really difficult. Is it? No. Hey, do you want to give this a shot? Yeah, I'd love to try. Okay, here, please here. get in. Get in this. Let me uh, let me take off my great GT Live merch. Oh, just get in the turkey already. Let, let, me, let me take off this amazing game theory signature jacket. Merch. Buy that merch. It wasn't easy, but between the two of us, we eventually got the spine out. There we yeah. go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yes, go. we did it. There's okay. there's the backbone. You know, our cuts weren't necessarily as clean as some of those online cooking channels, but for a first timer, I think we nailed it. I, right, totally. Nailed it. Boom. Oh, you touched my hand with your dirty turkey hands. I washed my hands while we were cut. Don't remember high fiving. For the next step, we had to let the knife, quote, glide through the collarbone. We're gonna let the knife glide. Glide. Glide stuff. Gonna, it, oh, it, it's kind of it, it kind of glided a little bit. It did it did a little gliding. And perfect. Okay, that was great. All right. So no, oh yeah, there you go. Surprise! Open. We let the knife glide. You, Look at that. All right, now now we perform the CPR. CPR. Go, right? Ready? Wait, hold up, Stephanie. Before you do CPR, you know you have to do the ABCs. Survey the scene. Survey the scene. Scene is clear. Assign. Everyone back away, Matt. Make sure you're clear. Call nine one one. You, you call nine one one. Airway. His airway is clear. Yes, because but he's not breathing. He's missing a large <laughs> chunk of his top. He's not, I'm not. Stop breathing. Getting any breaths. Like you play with the neck, of course it's not breathing. Take his pulse. Certainly no pulse. <laughs> Beginning CPR. Crack the ribs, ready? Ready, and. Okay, but case in point, case in point, if you're really doing a CPR, please do not crack the ribs. Thank you so much. Please do not injure that individual. Um, yeah. One. Ooh, oh, it did crack. Oh, it did Ooh. crack. I really did. Oh my god, let's watch it again. No pulse. Beginning I... CPR. Crack the ribs. Ready? Ready. And one. Ooh, oh, it did crack. Oh, it did crack. I really did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Breath. Breath. Okay, I think we did it. I think it's just a I love the chemistry between this, uh, these two individuals. It's just like a pun. It's like one, two, three, four. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Breathe! Breathe! Efficiently dead. All right, we, we have it. We have, he's, he's spatchcock. He's officially dead. Duh. He's ready to go. So this is it. This is the finished bird, all arranged, spatchcocked, ready to go. Salted, seasoned, everything. We're putting it in the fridge while we prep the other bird. Because he's only supposed to take 30 to 45, maybe an hour tops to cook, whereas our other guy's supposed to take multiple hours. So in an effort to get as clean of a taste test as possible, we both want him coming out of the oven at the same time. So Sherman went into the oven first, where we tended to him with all the temperature adjustments and repositionings that a classic style roasted turkey requires while it's in the oven. When Sherman was about an hour from being done, we put the spatchcocked turkey into the second oven. All right. Brrr, time for the big reveal. Let me try this. <coughs> it should be. <coughs> Here is ready.
regular turkey, our, our Norman Rockwell turkey. Ooh. He would be very proud, I feel. I think so too. We achieved a nice golden brown. This is pretty much exactly what we wanted this turkey to look like, so success there. So this bird took three and a half hours to cook. It was yeah. flipped twice. Literally hours and extra steps. First down and then back up again. It was covered with tinfoil and then uncovered. We did all the things and it came out pretty much exactly the way we wanted it. Yeah, this is pretty consistent to how it always looks. Yeah. So this is pretty darn good. And now for the spatchcock. Ta-da! I feel like this is a really nice golden brown. This looks great. There's also this weird cleavage shot up here, which is very strange, mm. but I, I I can't decide. Maybe I'm into it. I don't know. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Okay, that's very weird. Let's keep this wholesome and family friendly. Thank you so much, my pet. Oh no, Stephanie. Um. Uh, 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 okay, I, bro, my pet, like. Oh, uh, 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 um, 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 anyways, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> Round one, visual So, appearance. in the battle between spatchcock versus traditional roasted turkey, round one, visual appearance, what do you think? I have to give this one, for me, to the spatchcock. I do too. I, it's beautiful, it's golden brown, it's super even, it looks shiny, it looks like the picture of a turkey should look, except that it's flat. I also must remember um, that something called Qin Ren Yan Li Tu Xi Shi. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so the eyes! <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> so it's, it's quite of a cool, charming, gorgeous, good looking chicken. Turkey, sorry, turkey. Right, this guy, sorry. even though we did our best, and you're, again, Stephanie is experienced in this multiple years in a row. There's just no way that you're getting that nice even browning on every part. I gotta say, like visual appearance, if this is showing up on the table, I think I'm liking this one a little bit better. I know. But you know, you're not eating with your eyes. <laughs> it's a feast for your mouth. Eating with your teethy parts. <laughs> the teethy parts, that's right. So let's <laughs> eat with our teethy parts and carve this puppy up. That's okay, smart we're starting with white meat, so I'm gonna start carving into the breast of this one. That does look like a really nice get, piece of meat. Get in here with this detail shot, Matt. Look at look at that juice. Look at look at that glisten. See how glistening that is? Okay, so this spatchcock also looks very tender, I have to say. Uh, it's it's feeling very juicy as I cut into it. Yeah. We're each getting a nice slice here. And it's coming off like basically the same part of the breast. It's right on the outside. Like this should be a very even test. So from a crispiness of the skin standpoint, I would I would kind of call them both even for me. See, I'm not much of a skin guy. Spatchcock. They're both pretty crispy, honestly. Mm -hmm. Had a decent crisp to it. Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see regular roast Sherman. Yeah, pretty similar. Though again, I would say. The crispiness of this skin looks more even across the board, whereas Sherman over here, it's crispy on top, obviously, and it's got crispy on the side here. Yeah. But when it comes down to crispiness on the wing, that's where you're really starting to fall off. That's true. So here, more of the wing is crispy and more of the breast is crispy, whereas here, it's pretty much all focused around kind of the top and main part of the bird. So to me, honestly, I think I gotta go spatchcock on this one. It's just crispy and even throughout, whereas here, definite solid bits of crispy, but once you get into the wing, you start falling off. There's just no way of creating that same surface area with the 3D bird that you get with the spatchcock, so that has to be the tiebreaker, the overall evenness. Right. All okay. right, spatchcock again. Okay, what are we tasting first? I nominate what? Sherman. Let's go Sherman okay, first. Okay, Sherman first. Traditional roast first. Yes. Here we go. Okay. Nice. Can cut it with the fork. It is that moist. It's really, yeah, you don't need a knife for either. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. That was really good. I like turkey. That's <laughs> really good. Turkey makes me so happy. It's really moist. <laughs> it's a good decision to create a food channel, right? Good choice. Good decision. Turkey it's well it. salted, it tastes seasoned, it's a little bit buttery. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the way it should be. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We have two Thanksgiving turkeys this year. Ah. I'm very excited about this. And both of them were <laughs> business expense. Yes! <laughs> so got the, got the Sherman mm. implanted on your tongue? Yep. Okay, let's go for spatchcock. Uh. <laughs> I think I have my answer. I think I do too. Which, I can't believe this. Which one? 
It's special. Right! It is! I can't believe it. Uh, like, I'm mind blown by this. I am too, and I stand by my turkey cooking method any day of the week, but the spatchcock turkey tastes better. It's just a little bit moister. It's just slightly more delicious. We did the exact same thing to mm -hmm. both of these birds, yep. and yet this one tastes a little bit more flavorful somehow. Yeah, this one is falling apart in my mouth mm -hmm. that much more. It has a little bit more glisten. It's a little bit juicier. It's a little bit moisture, right? Yeah. Yeah. And again, wow. for half the time, less than half the time. It just bears mentioning, because this is YouTube, this is not rigged at all. We <sighs> legitimately yeah, did all of this all day. Yep. I, I kind of wanted my method to win, because like- I did I, too. I've been wasting my time all these years. I this did. Yeah, you must recognize that her order method take hours, whereas this new method take minutes. Save for time, productivity, save time. That is better. I did too. <laughs> that sucks. I know. Huh. Final round. Dark meat. Dark. This is never your cup of tea, but I'm curious to see if you maybe you like the spatchcock one. I'm into it. I'm all about, like, give me a big turkey leg with a bunch of barbecue sauce. I'm all about it. Mm. Right after the neck. <laughs> Again, Stephanie proven <laughs> she's a bit of a weirdy poop. Oh. All right, that feels weird. Mm-hmm, 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's keep this family friendly and wholesome. Thank you so much. Thank we you. did Sherman in round one first, so let's do uh, Spatchcock. Spatchcock first, first, yep. Let's go over here. Hmm. I thought Sherman was moister on the dark meat. Yeah. Is that because it's sitting in the juices? Yeah, it's, it's so moist because at the end of the cook, it's face down and it's just soaking up juices. It's like really marinating and it's already been crisped up for the majority of the cook. So it stays nice and brown. Although conversely, because it has been sitting face down in the juices, though the meat is juicier, I agree, the skin is soggier again, cause it's just sitting in juice. Whereas here in Spatchcock land, the skin is crispier all the way through, but yeah, the meat is slightly less juicy. Mm -hmm. I will say Sherman is a little bit better on the dark meat. Also, it is fair to say that three out of four tests went to Spatchcock. Well, yeah. Final verdict in the turkey battle 2020. Are you cooking your turkey wrong clickbait challenge? I think we are. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it. Like, yep, it's definitely a clickbait challenge. We I made it, it's a clickbait. Sorry. Cooking our turkey wrong. I think Steph and I have been cooking our turkey wrong since how long we've we been doing this thing? Eight years? Ten? Ten years? Since the decade what? that I've known Stephanie, we've been doing it wrong. I think Spatchcock is the way to go. I am literally going to cook my turkey this way next year. Unless, of of course, you want to deep fry it, in which case all of this is moot. So there you have it, theorists. <laughs> Spatchcocking made believers out of us, and it might just make a believer out of you too. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Thanks for watching, theorists. And Thank in you. the spirit of the season, let's give thanks to our sponsor for today's episode, Bright Cellars. Steph and I have mentioned this in past food theory episodes, but we absolutely love trying and learning about different sorts of spirits and wines. We're what we call educational drinkers where we like learning about alcohol and taste testing a lot of them and learning about the history and being able to like identify interesting things and the flavors of them. And that's what makes Bright Cellars such a great choice for us as casual drinkers. All we had to do was take a super simple seven question quiz and they sent us a personalized box of wine straight to our door. We mentioned that we wanted some fun creative options and they delivered. Literally, they delivered it to our door. We got a box filled with different wines from all over the world. Italy, Austria, Washington State. I'm pretty confident I never tasted a wine that had nectarine in it before, but that all changed when we opened the box. And best of all, Bright Cellars included wine educational cards that gave us some really great insights into each of the wines. So now, Steph and I have wine facts to fire off at anyone and everyone we encounter this holiday season. And get this, Bright Cellars is giving our followers 50% off their first six bottle box. So follow the link in the description below to take the quiz and get started. If you are at all interested in learning more about wine and spirits, then Bright Cellars is a fantastic choice. Links down in the description below, and I'll see you all next week. Well, anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video together with me. I hope you find this video very interesting to watch. I hope that you really learned something new. Is Are you cooking your bird correctly? Hm, interesting, right? Anyways, if you do like this video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and comment down below if you have any share of us. Don't forget to follow my channel, I sincerely appreciate all of the support and connection for my work. Thank you so much for your best, I hope to see you on the next video. But hey, that's just a theory, a full theory, bon appetit. Thank you.
and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye! Once again, please show me subscribe! Thank you!